the path of purification, Visuddhimagga, Abhatanta Charya Buddha Gosa, published by Buddhist Publication Society, Kandy, Sri Lanka. Part 2. Concentration, Samadhi. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Chapter 3 Taking a meditation subject. Extracts, passage 87 to 96. How is it to be known of a person's temperament? But it was asked, and how is it to be known that this person is of greedy temperament and so on? This is explained as follows, by the posture, by the action, by eating, seeing, and so on, by the kind of states occurring, may temperament be recognized. Herein by the posture, when one of greedy temperament is walking in his usual manner, he walks carefully, puts his foot down slowly, puts it down evenly, lifts it up evenly, and his step is springy. One of hating temperament walks as though he were digging with the points of his feet, puts his foot down quickly, lifts it up quickly, and his step is dragged along. One of deluded temperament walks with a perplexed gait, puts his foot down hesitantly, lifts it up hesitantly, and his step is pressed down suddenly. And this is said in the account of the origin of the Magandhya Sutta, the step of one of greedy nature will be springy, the step of one of hating nature dragged along. Deluded, he will suddenly press down his step, and one without defilement has a step like this. The stance of one of greedy temperament is confident and graceful. That of one of hating temperament is rigid. That of one of deluded temperament is muddled, likewise in sitting. And one of greedy temperament spreads his bed unhurriedly, lies down slowly, composing his limbs, and he sleeps in a confident manner. When woken, instead of getting up quickly, he gives his answer slowly, as to doubtful. One of hating temperament spreads his bed hastily anyhow, and his body flung down he slips with a scowl. When woken, he gets up quickly and answers as though annoyed. One of deluded temperament spreads his bed all awry and sleeps mostly face downwards, with his body sprawling. When woken, he gets up slowly, saying, Hmm. Since those of faithful temperament, etc., are parallel to those of greedy temperament, etc., their postures are therefore like those described above. This firstly is how the temperaments may be recognized by the posture. By the action, also in the acts of sweeping, etc., one of greedy temperament rubs the broom well, and it sweeps cleanly and evenly without hurrying or scattering the sand, as if he was strewing Sinduvara flowers, one of hating temperament, grabs the broom tightly, and he sweeps uncleanly and unevenly with a harsh noise, hurriedly throwing up the sand on each side. One of deluded temperament grabs the broom loosely, and he sweeps neither cleanly nor evenly, mixing the sand up and turning it over. As with sweeping, so too with any action such as washing and dyeing ropes and so on, one of greedy temperament acts skillfully, gently, evenly 
and carefully. One of hating temperament acts tensely, stiffly, and unevenly. One of deluded temperament acts unskillfully, as if muddled, unevenly, and indecisively. Also, one of greedy temperament wears his robe neither too tightly nor too loosely, confidently, and level all round. One of hating temperament wears it too tight. And not level all round. One of deluded temperament wears it loosely and in a muddled way. Those of faithful temperament, etc., should be understood in the same way as those just described, since they are parallel. This is how temperaments may be recognized by the actions. By eating, one of greedy temperament likes eating rich sweet food. When eating, he makes a round lump, not too big, and eats unhurriedly, savoring the various tastes. He enjoys getting something good. One of hating temperament likes eating rough, sour food. When eating, he makes a lump that fills his mouth, and he eats hurriedly without savoring the taste. He is aggrieved when he gets something not good. One of deluded temperament has no settled choice. When eating, he makes a small, unrounded lump, and as he eats, he drops bits into his dish, smearing his face, with his mind astray, thinking of this and that. Also, those of faithful temperament should be understood in the same way as those just described, since they are parallel. This is how the temperament. May be recognized by eating, and by seeing, and so on. When one of greedy temperament sees even a slight pleasing visible object, he looks long as if surprised. He seizes on trivial virtues, discounts genuine faults, and when departing, he does so with regret, as if unwilling to leave. When one of hating temperament. Sees even a slight, unpleasing visible object. He avoids looking long, as if he were tired. He picks out trivial faults, discounts genuine virtues, and when departing, he does so without regret, as if anxious to live. When one of deluded temperament sees any sort of visible object, he copies what others do. If he hears others criticizing, he criticizes. If he hears others praising, he praises. But actually, he feels equanimity in himself, the equanimity of unknowing. So too with sounds, and so on. And those with faithful temperament, etc., should be understood in the same way as those just described, since they are parallel. This is how the temperaments may be recognized by seeing, and so on, by the kind of states occurring. In one of greedy temperament, there is frequent occurrence of such states as deceit, fraud, pride, evilness of wishes, greatness of wishes, discontent, foppery, and personal vanity. In one of hating temperament, there is frequent. Occurrence of such states as anger, enmity, disparaging, domineering, envy, and avarice. In one of deluded temperament, there is frequent occurrence of such states as stiffness, torpor, agitation, worry, uncertainty, and holding on tenaciously, with refusal to relinquish. In one of faithful temperament. There is frequent occurrence of such states as free generosity, desire to see noble ones, desire to hear the good Dhamma, great gladness, ingenuousness, honesty, and trust in things that inspire trust. In one of intelligent temperament, there is frequent occurrence of such states as readiness to be spoken to, possession of good friends. Knowledge of the right amount 
in eating, mindfulness and full awareness, devotion to wakefulness, a sense of urgency about things that should inspire, a sense of urgency, and wisely directed endeavor. In one of speculative temperament, there is frequent occurrence of such states as talkativeness, sociability, boredom with devotion to the profitable, failure to finish undertakings, smoking by night and flaming by day, that is to say, hatching plans at night and putting them into effect by day, and mental running hither and thither. This is how the temperaments may be recognized by the kind of states occurring. However, these directions for recognizing the temperaments have not been handed down in their entirety in either the texts or the commentaries. They are only expressed according to the opinion of the teachers and cannot therefore be treated as authentic. For even those of hating temperament can exhibit postures, etc., ascribed to the greedy temperament when they try diligently, and postures, etc., never arise with distinct characteristics in a person of mixed temperament. Only such directions for recognizing temperament as are given in the commentaries should be treated as authentic. For this is said, a teacher who has acquired penetration of minds will know the temperament and will explain a meditation subject accordingly. One who has not should question the pupil. So it is by penetration of minds or by questioning the person that it can be known whether he is one of greedy temperament or one of those beginning with hating temperament.